eCampus Ontario has the eCampus Ontario passport. What should be their ambition, do you think, for, for using this? Can you provide some elements that, that they, of uh, things they might want to accomplish by having their own passport for Ontario based in the post-secondary sector? If you are thinking uh, badges uh, on the base of open recognition, uh, uh, eCampus Ontario, it's a, it's a, it's a network. Uh, I think that we are very quickly speaking in terms of ecosystem. So uh, I think that the, the passport is basically the place where um, these different kind of organization can, can meet. With, uh, it's a place where you can see an active community at the point. So uh, having a network of organization issuing badges uh, will not have a real impact, in my opinion, on the, on the area, on the region, I don't know how you call it in English, uh, without that you have a place where you can see what is happening there, what kind of collaboration there is, what kind of endorsement there is between different kind of organizations, um, uh, how, uh, sharing uh, the badge between organizations and, and building, I would say, uh, this ecosystem. So, uh, in my opinion, the passport as an open space, as an open uh, platform, uh, show you an active community and uh, bring the ecosystem idea as a new level because ecosystem should not be thought uh, only as uh, with the ecosystem between organizations creating badges and issuing badges but the ecosystem is all is also uh, ecosystem with uh, the, the badge earners which will in one way uh, show uh, the badge that they have got um, and, and of course all the other stakeholders and all, all other actors which will uh, basically connect to uh, the passport, to the community. So in, the, in an ecosystem like this, uh, badges can come from many places, not just CanCred Factory, not just Open Badge Factory. They can be accepted if they're legal open badges and, and recognized and, and I guess be given new life uh, within a passport, um, within an eCampus Ontario passport. So in a, in a scenario like that, you might have, say, an employer who says, um, we want these skills, um, we like these badges that say they demonstrate these skills, so therefore there's a relationship there. They've said uh, they like those badges that are perhaps issued by this post-secondary institution, so if individual earners come with those badges, that is already a connection with, with the employer, for example, yes? Yeah, that, that's true, yeah. And then the, the next step in the, in the development of the passport, it's very important to, to see, I would say, different steps in the, in the development. The first step has been basically to get easily badges for me in my backpack, in my personal uh, backpack. Second step has been to be able to share it with my with the community, with my with my peers and with my with my colleagues. So it's a, a gallery, we call it a gallery. Uh, the third stage has been to to go further on uh, on basically bringing more value uh, uh, at the social level or bringing more uh, value on the badge. So uh, endorsements inside the passport. Uh, possibility to, to bring more evidences and uh, to enrich your, your, your badge and your connections. And now we are going uh, in a direction where we're bringing new, uh, more powerful ways to basically look for, find people with some competencies. So now employers are coming in the passport. We are designing, I would say, new kind of accounts for organizations. Organizations will be able to to, uh, to become members of the passport to basically find uh, competent people there, but also they will also be able to endorse them, to follow them, and so on. 